All right, well, uh, hey, thank you very much for everybody coming out this afternoon to, uh, to this event. Uh, my name is David Brennan. I'm the market leader for Sacramento. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so uh, we're here to talk about the greater Sacramento talent story, which is really uh, a very cool report that highlights what's going on from a talent standpoint in the Sacramento market. Um, I basically put it all together myself. It was very inspiring. Uh, it took me months, not kidding. It was the research department from uh, GSEC and uh, CBRE that put it together. And it's, uh, it's a great, great report. Uh, it's kind of going on a road show right now. Uh, let's see, you guys were in Newport Beach, Orange County. Uh, now they're in the Bay Area, then they're gonna go to Seattle. And really it's all about just kind of informing people about the Sacramento market and the benefits of uh, the marketplace. Um, you know, we've got a lot of interest in Sacramento from both investors and occupiers, uh, but we want to kind of, uh, you know, keep it going and accelerate it, especially on the occupier side. Uh, there's no reason to skip over Sacramento and go to other states. We've got it all right here. So, um, I think that's about all I had. It's up to an interviewer to introduce uh, Lisa Stanley, who's with CBRE. He's going to take us through a few comments. Uh, high level stuff about the report, um, and then we'll have uh, Barry Broom speak. And um, really, I think uh, this is a very casual event, so we'll, you know, introduce some topics and things. But uh, after it's over, come up and talk to us, and let's chat about Sacramento, what's going on up there. So with that, I'll turn it over to Lisa Stam. Sacramento region story. So I'm going to go through a couple of highlights that I found really interesting when we went through this process over the last year um, because I needed to kind of be refreshed on where Sacramento is because it's changed so much um, over the last five years. Um, there are three quarters of a million students in the pipeline within a hundred mile radius of the Sacramento region which is really phenomenal when you look at the talent opportunities uh, for Sacramento. Uh, our median age by metro area is actually younger than Los Angeles, San Francisco, Portland, and Seattle. We have 87,000 people commuting from Sacramento to the Bay Area every day, which is just really, really remarkable. But we also, on the flip side, have 27,000 people moving from the Bay Area to Sacramento every year. So there's a lot of back and forth. We still um, have a lot of uh, availability as it relates to office space for those people, those 87,000 people to, to stay home. Uh, we also gained more new net millennials uh, in one year, about 6,700 to be exact. And the cost of living in Sacramento is more affordable than Austin, Denver, Seattle, and the Bay Area. So a couple more things here, I think this one's particularly interesting because it relates to kind of how Sacramento is perceived. But over the last 10 years, the um, reliance on government jobs in Sacramento has gone from 27% to 22%. And we see that further decreasing. Not only are we seeing more private sector employers coming to Sacramento, uh, but the government is still growing, but we are seeing more private sector um, growth in our market. And we're experiencing new interest from technology and life sciences uh, companies, which Barry will talk about in a minute. So uh, our existing clients are using this report um, to talk to their HR departments about recruitment. And we're getting a lot of interest from not only the Bay Area, but other markets, and they want to learn more about Sacramento. So thanks for coming and listening to us and taking Sacramento into consideration as it relates to another option. Um, I'm going to introduce Barry Broom with the Greater Sacramento Economic Council. He's the president and CEO and a real champion for our region. So Barry. Thank you. Go, Lisa. Yes, I'm originally a Rust Belt economic developer, so you know we're uh, big believers in hitting hard and, and playing to win. And so, um, you know, about five years ago, we launched this organization from the file. It'll technically be five years old in August, and uh, we've raised uh, 51 million in private money. We have 30 CEOs that have committed a million dollars to the organization now. So one of the things we wanted to do was build something that rivaled, you know, what you would see in Dallas, you know, what you would see in Denver Metro. Um, I ran the Greater Phoenix Economic Council for 10 years. Um, so um, I know what it looks like to run hard and hit hard. 
My executive vice president, Daniel Casey, is with me. Hello, Danielle. She was uh, 40 under 40 in Arizona, Arizona Economic Developer of the Year. Uh, she's on the IEDC board. And, uh, you know, we've been focused on bringing in, you know, nationally attractive people and talent uh, to the organization so that our community had, you know, the very best representation. You know, 2008 Sacramento was probably hit as hard as any place in the western half of the United States. We were slow to recover. So instead of just accepting that as a fait accompli, you know, the leadership in the community took action. So we have 43 COs on this board. Uh, we have 20, uh, all 20 of our communities from a public institutional standpoint are on the board. The Chancellor of UC Davis, Gary Mays on our board, President and CEO of Sacramento State, Robert Nelson's on our board, and Brian King Las Rio. So it's one single organization managing all the data and evidence on the market, giving people one path forward to do investment. And basically what we do for the real estate and brokerage community is we do the non-commissioned work. You know, we will build the incentive packages for companies with you. We will help you with, with, you know, city and county issues. We'll build engineering platforms with our universities. We just closed on 150 sophomore engineers today in Natomas. GLL broker got the commission, but when that was going back and forth, we literally got the president of Sacramento State and the dean of engineering school on the phone. Cynthia Cadillo did a deal for us and literally laid out how we were gonna deliver 150 engineers you know, for that company. So when you're an emerging market, it's a lot more block and tackling. We, we're proud of all of California. You know, we realize that Sacramento has been an understated and overlooked community. We realize some of that's been self-inflicted. So we only have ourselves to sort of hold accountable for that, but that's changed now. And uh, that's what we're asking everyone to do is, you know, give us a shot, give us a look. You know, uh, I wanna go over a couple of things that particularly irritate me, because you know, if you do economic development in California, if you're not irritated all of the time, you're taking way too much Xanax, so. <laughs> or you're just delirious. So one of the, first off, I wanna thank obviously my entire team that's here. Um, I wanna thank CBRE, because you know, one of the things that, that we're engaged in is building credibility. So when you're doing something new, and you're new to California, I mean, just think two years ago, I was in a pinstripe suit with a red tie and a handkerchief. This is how far I've come. <laughs> you know, I now have Jerry Garcia tattooed on my back, and I'm gonna show you about that. You know, this is joking. Just kidding. Um, yeah, no one told me not to come down here in a suit and tie. I did it for three years before I realized it was a bad idea. But, um, so, so obviously, you know, we're here to partner with all of our California markets. This isn't us trying to pull something out of the Bay Area. But, you know, the exodus of companies out of our state, you know, has gone at a rate that we acknowledge. And, you know, even though we recycle our economy and we're first to market on artificial intelligence and machine learning, or whatever, whatever the next breakthrough is in technology, that doesn't excuse letting companies leave your state without fight. There's no excuse for that. And so one of the things that we want to say in our state, you know, if you're having housing affordability access or utility pricing, or you know, your employees are having a difficult time you know, with a managed lifestyle. You don't have to leave California. We can help with that. And what this data basically says is we actually have the talent for that. So the idea that we don't have the talent really isn't true. And of course, UC Davis is the number five public university in the United States. Berkeley's the number one university in the United States among public universities. Berkeley's an hour and 15 minutes from downtown Sacramento. So the notion you can't draw from Berkeley's law school, business school, and engineering school while capturing UC Davis's food and agricultural veterinary and medical schools, I mean, you're talking about those schools I just mentioned are number one or number two in the world, and they're in our market. And, you know, we want to acknowledge that those young people deserve to have a right to stay in California and have a managed lifestyle. And if we build a future for them, they'll prefer California. Uh, we're studying companies that are leaving the Bay Area, and what we're finding out is the labor turnover rate when they leave the Bay Area is extraordinarily high. In, it may look like a promised land to move to the Bay Area in Texas, but when you lose 75% of your employees on the move, then you gotta replace them in Texas, and then you gotta bake in the uh, disruption. You know, it's a 20 to $25 million cost for just 500 employees. So we think we wanna keep all of California strong. It's our turn to deliver our fair share of the leadership on that our turn to create sustainability and stability in Northern California, but it's also our turn to tell our story and tune our own horn. 
So one of the, uh, a couple of things that I think are very, just in the last 90 days, we landed MLS, Major League Soccer, Ron Burkle, Los Angeles Millionaire, thank you for that. $550 million in the rail yards, that's a strong investment. And, uh, you know, Ron Burkle's a believer. When I sat down with Ron uh, at the announcement, I said, you're gonna have the best Major League franchise in the entire country. And he said, without batting an eye, I know that, and that's why I put this money in Sacramento. And then, of course, the background at D-Bay, you know, the Kings and Golden One. Uh, the VEC has a $250 million venture fund. In 2014, we had $15 million under management venture capital. At the end of this year, we'll have $1.2 billion. So in 2019, we had 43 companies close on $138 million in venture financing. In 2018, Nashville closed on $500,000 in seed money. So. When I pick up and read that Nashville's the next tech center, and I find out their college educational achievement is 10 to 15% below our market, and they're not even in the venture space, and we're launching three funds this year, you know, it tells me that we should be telling our story better, but we also need help in doing that. So uh, a couple other quick achievements. UC Davis announced a partnership with Wexford on a billion dollars of investment. Um, that will go into downtown Sacramento in our Oak Park neighborhood with an emphasis on cell therapies. They're putting $400 million of equity into the project, and they're building 250,000 square feet of spec lab space as part of their plan. Our airport's a top producing airport. It's been rated number one by J.D. Power and Service. So, uh, and, and we're proud of California. We know California's not perfect. Uh, I'm from Ohio. I don't know if you've been to Ohio. It's not perfect. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of other places like Michigan or Alabama or Texas's carbon footprint. They're not perfect either. So we can love California and believe in it without it being perfect. We obviously want our state government to move more aggressively to improve the business environment. But I don't think there's anybody that's going to question in the next 10 years when it comes to economic success. California's going to lead the way. We're going to lead the way in electric vehicles, connected vehicles, autonomous vehicles. And in our community, we've launched the California Mobility Center. We put $200 million together to launch it. The anchor is a company called Pen Motion out of Aachen, Germany, and they've built most of the hardware technology for the car industry. So basically what this institution will do is build engine and powertrain infrastructure and hardware infrastructure for the mobility industry that's in the Bay Area because the, mo the mobility industry in the Bay Area is primarily digital and software. So these two markets can work together. We're an excellent location for regional headquarters. Uh, we're on the path of building more promise. We've got about 750,000 square feet of spec office coming online in the next six months. Uh, we're going to be building a three to 400,000 square foot spec tech, tech center at the rail yards where the major league soccer team will be. So the people are coming, the talent's coming, our story's coming, we need a little bit more product, and we just need people to give us a chance. So really, what this gets down to is, before your clients leave the state, give us a look, and we're pros. I've been doing this 31 years. We're not gonna run your client through some experience that isn't gonna be positive for them. We know what we can do, we know what marks we can hit, we know what we can deliver, and if someone asks us to deliver something, we can't deliver, we'll take a pass because we're gonna want you to call us again. So I'm really grateful to CBRE for lending their credibility and name to this report, and I really feel like our community's on the rise. We wanna do our part for ourselves. We wanna take a stand for California. We want you to do that with us, and all we want you to do is just give us a chance. Just let us compete for the opportunities, and we'll step up and do the rest. So I wanna thank my colleagues that came down from the greater Sacramento area. I wanna thank my entire team, I wanna thank CBRE, and you watch the next three to five years, all they're gonna be talking about is that cow pound called Sacramento. <laughs> and we're gonna remember everybody that called us a cow pound, because I'm Irish, and we're really gonna hold the grudges. <laughs> we can pretend not to, but we will hold it out to the better end. But it fires me up when people call us a cow pound, because I know we're gonna show up a thing or two and we know where we're headed, and we're proud of California. We all want to be for California, for our community. We all want to work together, and we want to thank you, and Lisa and David, for your support. And with that, I'll let you have a beer. So thank you for coming. Yeah.